Today I'm taking a look at the Thinker Man. I actually put a very nice box together for it as well. That is actually nicer than I was expecting. That is a very shiny material on it. You can definitely see that they put a lot of effort into getting all the details right for this guy. Of course, we got the right elbow on the left thigh, exactly as it's supposed to be, all the way down to the hair that I always thought looked kind of odd on the original statue. They got that down as well. The fingers do look pretty good. And the face, just as scary as the original statue. He is, of course, perched on a rock, and we have a nice thick base here on the bottom. What the guy could definitely say about it is not super heavy thing. This is definitely not a solid piece of bronze. This is a cast resin. They say that it has bronze inside of it. I don't know if it really matters, but it is hand painted anyway. Either way, it looks pretty darn legit. So the base is about four and seven eighths by about four and 15 sixteenths. The front does stick out a little bit past the base. We're looking at about two and a half inches beyond the base, but on all the other sides, it could fit on a bookshelf. As far as the height, we are looking at just under one foot. So if you have one foot spacing on your shelves, that'll fit inside of there, no problem. So yeah, that appears to be very true to the original by Augusta Rodin. It's typically believed that this is inspired by Dante Alighieri's The Divine Comedy, which is a poem about Dante's journey through hell. He was originally making a work called The Gates of Hell. We had doors with lots of bodies all around it, which was understood to have characters from The Divine Comedy, but perched at the top was Dante. Later on, he separated that from his original work. That was called The Thinker Man, and it became much more famous. And it is hard not to appreciate this work is a very interesting piece.